<laughs> you know, I, I used to, when I grew up, I thought, oh, I wanted to be a lawyer, right? Because, you know, you watch That's Perry a close Mason. Cousin kind of of it. Yeah, right? you watch Perry Mason, and, you know, you, you see the dramatic thing in the courtroom, and I always thought that was cool, right? And, and, and I love clothes. He wore a suit and all of that. Um, but I also, in junior high school, used to pretend like I was doing the news, right? Just an anchor. And, and, and so uh, one of my um, professors in um, college said, I think you'd be good at this. You should give it a try. I hadn't really thought about it. Um, and I graduated. And my buddy, uh, who later became police chief at Highland Park, uh, he and I used to, our job was, because when I graduated, I didn't have a job. Uh, was to go out in front of his mama's house and throw the softball for about six hours. And so one day I said, dude, if we don't stop this, this is going to be it for us. And so my brother's old girlfriend worked at um, the PBS affiliate in Detroit, and she wasn't talking to him any longer, but we were still cool. And she got me in as an intern, and I worked as an unpaid intern uh, there for close to a year, and I was serious about it. And I got hired, and, you know, that was the start of it. And I just, um, it was just something that people said they thought I would be good at. It wasn't a burning desire from the time I was little. And even when I was pretending, I never thought that was going to be my career. You know, I went from being Bruce Lee to Julius Irving to, you know I mean? I, the traditional kind of male thoughts of who I was going to be, right? Be a, the dopest ca uh, yeah. karate expert yeah. in the world. Or, yeah. Yeah. or an NBA Jay. superstar, one another, you know. But um, it all fell into place, and um, I started as an intern. I started hosting a show when the host didn't show up one night, and I had to do it. And then a friend of mine, because I would have never done this, a friend of mine who was a hustler in Detroit, and by that I mean she was a hustler in that she was a female camera person out in the field, which never happened back then. And she contacted BET and said, hey, we want to do your stories for BET News. So we became the freelance bureau for BET News. And I was the reporter. And I'm telling you, it all just kind of rolled together. And a lot of it had very, very little to do with me. I was just in the middle of the street getting hit. Boom, boom, boom. And I just kept getting up. So, Well, you represent at least for a lot of us that I didn't watch BT from the beginning, beginning, but close to the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you represent a part of that kind of old school BT legacy, you know, when it was video soul and <laughs> Caribbean yeah. rhythms Teen and summit, teen summit. And of course then uh BT news. And there has been, I've heard BT get criticized a lot because they eliminate their news department. Um, I know it's obviously under different ownership now with Viacom, but, when you when you see in present day how they've sort of decided to make their approach to news and serious issues, what are your thoughts about how so they've think, done things? Yeah, I think that BET had a rough go, and I'm not a BET apologist by any means. Um, I think it had a rough go in the early days because it had to be everything to everybody, right? And Bob Johnson used to tell people, look, you want more news? Watch it more, right? And, and Bob was strictly numbers, Right. We, we show rump shaking videos because y'all watch him. We show this. And to a great degree, uh, he kept the news department afloat for many years. And then we started to make money. Um, and so today, I think it is part and parcel, uh, whether it's BT TV one um, or any of the, the new kind of slants to black programming. A lot of it is is what what we watch um, in sheer numbers. But I also tell people, uh, white folk don't watch news in huge numbers. They know the importance of it. Networks know the importance of it. And there's a reason that those news divisions, yeah, they make money, but they can make more money with an entertainment, uh, entertainment program in that hour slot. But there's a reason because there's gravity to news. There is power to news. And that's why they keep them. And so whether it's, Black newspapers, black radio, black TV shows. Um, you know, you talk about in the book the, the, the want and need to make sure that we keep these things afloat. What you're doing independently, what Roland Martin is trying to do independently. All of these things are important. I've got some things that we are hoping to announce very soon. But it's a struggle. I mean, let's be real about it.
it's a struggle. Black people will tell you, yeah, yeah, we miss you. We want to, okay, dude. But, but did if, you watch? Did you watch it? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, but I also know there were times where I did shows and people gave me a number, which I thought was unrealistic ratings wise. We surpassed that number. They still canceled the show. So at some level, those networks didn't want it. And was it just BET? So, I mean, we've got to, we've got to get to what we say we want and what we really want and be about understanding though that the dissemination of information is still important. Mm -hmm.